Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Grand Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So, Outlaws of Thunder Junction spoiler season is coming out in about a week. So, well, you know what time it is. It's time for Mark Rosewater's teasers that kind of give us some hints and help us see what might be possible in that set. So we're not getting an actual card images. No, no, no. Those are reserved for the leaks that will happen between now and then, most likely. <laughs> Just kind of kidding, but kind of not. There might be some more leaks. Check out the one I had the other day. Anyways, let's jump into those teasers. So let's check out Blogatog. That's right, Blogatog. The place where Mark Rosewater blogs and responds to community feedback uh, and community questions. Sometimes, uh... In a PR kind of way. That's a different story for a different day, though. In this episode, let's talk about the teasers for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Before previews for Outlaws of Thunder Junction officially begin, I thought it'd be fun to do another one of dual-style teasers where I give tiny hints of things to come. Note that I'm only giving you partial information. So again, like I said earlier, hey, this is only going to be teasers. Not spoilers, not leaks, not the actual card themselves, but we will get some, like, uh, generalizations about what we're going to see in the set. Also, like, maybe some text from some cards. And then also, we usually get some, like, new creature types and that kind of stuff that we're going to be seeing. Or creature type combinations. Anyways, first up, here's things you can expect. A new batch of five related creature types. Interesting. So, again, uh, I believe we kind of already saw this, maybe, on uh, one of the leaked images, I think. Uh, it's, like, Outlaws, I believe, would be the type B. And I'm sorry, I, I guess I should say spoilers, potentially. Because, yeah, we have seen some leaks already. So... Yeah, some of these things might already be solved, so I'm just going to say that out loud right now. And if you don't want to hear that, uh, maybe skip every single time. I'm like, hey, this might be a spoiler. So, a new batch of fire related creature types. That's, I believe, like outlaws. It's going to be like, I think, assassins, mercenaries, other things. I don't know. Things that are uh, outlaws. And anyways, moving on. So, it's like kind of like a party mechanic, I would assume. Next up. A card capable of returning three different card types from the graveyard to the battlefield. That's pretty huge. Be able to bring back three things. I mean, typically, I mean, I think of like Victimize, right? Victimize can bring back two creatures. This one can bring back three different things from the graveyard to the battlefield. I would assume that means then permanence, obviously. So not sorceries, not instants. Although there is like that unset commander that actually can bring back instants and sorceries. That being said, yeah, bringing back probably, I would assume, creatures, artifacts, uh, probably enchantments. Maybe lands, actually, instead. Maybe lands. Because, actually, yeah, there's a desert theme. So, actually, I'm going to go with lands, creatures, and... Sure, we'll go with an artifact as well. Maybe not enchantments. Okay. Anyways, next up. A mechanic players have been asking for us to do for many years gets made as the setting was perfect place to finally do it. Wonder what that is. Um, let me know the console if you know what that one is. Because, again, players have been asking for it for years for them to do it. In, like, Wild Wild West setting is perfect for that, with, like, Outlaws and that kind of stuff. Interesting. We shall see. Uh, dual Lands with a land subtype that has never been on Dual Lands before. I'm assuming that's Desert. Let me know in the comments below if you think that that's correct. I believe, uh, and again, I think spoiler here, uh, I believe we already saw, basically, a Dual Land uh, of two, two different Dual Lands, I think, that were Desert. So that one has been solved check i mean that one could have been guessed probably right because again we're going into the wild wild west there are deserts good thing that deserts are back again for any of those desert tribal decks out there a new modal mechanic that introduces something different to think about interesting so again modal giving you different selections different options interesting that there's something different to think about i wonder what that's going to be a card that can swap exchange control of up to three different card types that's fun so that's going to be some kind of a chaotic card, I would assume, to just start switching things around. Kind of like a, I made a while back a, uh, what I call it, equivalent exchange. Any of Full Metal Alchemist fans out there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did like an equivalent exchange deck that uh, players ended up hating because they don't like their cards taken, even if they get something in return. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what this does. <laughs> Anyways, next up, a new creature token that has an ability no creature tokens ever had before. Spoiler alert, I believe we've already seen this one. I can't remember if it's like Mercenary. I think it might be Mercenary. I believe it's a 1-1 one, one red creature token that can tap and give another one of your creatures plus one with zero until end of turn. Activate only at sorcery speed because wizards love throwing activate sorcery speed on things, even though it's not really all that needed for this. But I believe that that's what that one is. Correct me in the comments below if my memory is incorrect on that one, but I believe I'm either close or right there on it. 
Uh, a typo card for skeletons and zombies. Cool. There you go. Uh, creature tokens in this set. Uh, some might have abilities. A 1-1 one, one white sheep. A 1-1 one, one blue bird. A 1-1 one, one black vampire rogue. 1-1 one, one red mercenary. So again, mercenary is what I already talked about earlier. So that's the new creature token, I believe. 2-1 green varmint. That's funny. 2-2 two, two, white ox. 2-2 two, two, white spirit. 2-2 two, two, blue and black zombie. 3-1 red dinosaur. Getting dinosaurs again. Interesting. 3-3 three, three, white angel. 3-3 three, three, green elk. Oko, of course. 4-4 four, four, red scorpion dragon. That's a thing. Cool. Uh, XX Green Elemental, and Star Star Blue Ox. Very cool. Giant Blue Oxes. Love it. Kind of like Babe, maybe, you know, Minnesota? Yeah? No? Okay. Anyways, uh, some of the planes with legendary villains in the set. Dominaria, Eldraine, Fiora, Innistrad, Ixalan, Kaladesh, Kaldheim, Kamigawa, Nukapena, and Ravnica. Interesting. So, yeah, lots of villains coming from lots of places. Very, very cool. Next here is some rules text that will be showing up on cards. So this is where... I really like to kind of see and get in the nitty gritty of things because it's kind of fun to just guess like how this is going to turn out, especially since we know like certain, certain legendary creatures are going to be in the set based off of the art and that kind of stuff as well. So like maybe like this comes that way with this kind of a card like this, like last time I was really hoping that Masker Girl got that poison, uh, essentially that in, was it in fact, here it was like poison counters, whatever it was. I was hoping that uh, Masker Girl would get that. It did not, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, here's hoping that my guesses are correct this time. Then repeat this process X more times. Gotta love that. As uh, an X spell deck creator myself with all this wealth, uh, I can imagine this can be a giant massive effect, and I would absolutely love to see that. I'm sure there's going to be some kind of restriction on this because it's kind of a big blowout effect. Typically has some kind of restriction on it. We shall see. If it wasn't cast or no mana was spent to cast it. Interesting. Okay, so I mean, I'm kind of like, uh, I mean, there are certain cards that are like, hey, like it prevents those things from actually hitting the field if they weren't cast. Like, was it Primeval Spawn, I think is the one? Like, if you didn't actually cast it or if you cast it for zero, then you, like, it just goes away. I think that's the one. Primeval Spawn's like that, like the Wooberg plus five generic. I think so. Plotting cards in your hand costs two less. Um, so a quick thing. Uh, I believe uh, this was in one of the leaks a while ago. I don't know if we've actually seen an actual card with it. So again, spoiler, plotting, I believe, is essentially like foretell, but it's like as if it's always foretell zero. So essentially you are going to be or utilizing the plotting cost of the card. You set that card aside, essentially like an exile face down, and then you can just cast that for free. I think it's only at sorcery speed, essentially, or maybe just whatever the speed of the card is. So, but, but for free. So it gets like basically foretell cost zero anyways, but yeah, having plotting cards cost two less to plot that can be very powerful in that you can basically, you know, cast that plotting, not cast the plotting. You can activate that ability or utilize that ability, utilize that effect, whatever it's called essentially for two less. So again, if the plot cost is five and the card usually would cost five, just cost three now. And then you can cast it for free later. So again, you save two. That's going to be pretty great. You can't cast a spell during your first, second or third turns of the game. Love that. Kind of like, oh gosh. I mean, it's like not Sarah Angel or whatever the one is, but yeah, it, it's the one that like the 3-3 three, three flying angel of vigilance. I think it costs two, essentially, but you can't cast during your first three turns of the game. So that's a pretty spicy card. Love it. This card gains flashback zero. Yes. Being able to cast a card for free out of your graveyard. Absolutely love that. I mean, again, for flashback, it's going to be instant sorceries, but still, that's pretty cool. Uh, being able to, I don't know how we're going to get that card. I mean, Maybe it's like choose a spell you just cast or something like that or, or on the stack. Or maybe it's, um, I don't know, probably just choose a card in your graveyard, I guess. And then that card gains flashback zero. Target becomes a white red with base heart of zero one. These kind of like, uh, not polymorph type effects, but like transmuting effects, essentially, where like you're just turning a creature into something kind of useless is quite nice. Uh, it does not say until end of turn. So that's quite nice as well. It does not take away abilities, though. It doesn't look like. So again, like if you are doing this to someone's commander, they're still going to have their triggers, it looks like, unless there's other text on the card that we're not seeing, obviously. But yeah, making something into a 0-1 can be quite nice, so you can easily take it out, or again, make it just useless for most things. Uh, obviously, what's the one? Dark Simutation is really, really good because it turns it into it permanently, a 0-1 indestructible bug, essentially. Insect, I think, right? And then also, it makes it so that it has no abilities, too, which is crucial in Commanders. Uh... When you win that flip, copy that spell. We are getting coin flips, apparently. I don't know if I knew this for some... I don't think I knew this, that we got coin flips. That's pretty sweet. That makes sense The Wild Wild West, like, you know, like in a saloon, like, you know, flipping coins, gambling, I guess. I don't know. 
Uh, but yeah, having coin flips in a Wild Wild West set, very, very cool. Copy the spell, love copying, and a lot of additional value out of something. Pretty cool. If a triggered ability of a legend creature controls, the ability triggers this one. Goodness gracious, wizards, we just did this. Okay, so uh, we just got Roaming Throne, right? And uh, this is like, no, again. Okay, um, I mean, I hope this is on a decently restricted card, I will say. Like, again, Roaming Throne, four mana, Ward 2, because Wizard throws Ward 2 on everything these days, and it can fit in any deck out there which is just ridiculous. I hope we didn't just get another one of those. Basically, I know Roaming Throne is slightly different, but still, yeah, triggered abilities of Ledger creatures are very powerful because there's a lot of commanders out there that have triggered abilities and the entire deck's built around them. So yes, doubling that up is incredibly impactful. Having a ton of these Roaming Throne type effects, yeah, it's something that players are like, yeah, I can add that to my deck, but also like it can be very problematic when you just keep doing those things because obviously you're just trying to make chase cards. I'll get off my soapbox here in a second. You're just trying to make chase cards that you know are going to be chase cards because it's like, oh, Commander, yeah, you buy the set. Buy the set for this card. It's going to be a $30 card. Buy the set. Roaming Throne. Roaming Throne. Hopefully this is restrictive. Hopefully this is not in just a generic cost. It's not just an artifact. It has an actual cost to it. Again, maybe it's Wooberg. Great. Put it in Wooberg. Limit it. Okay, please. Do something to limit this so that every deck can't just use it and you just make it into a chase card for people just to chase and then have ridiculous things like this happen. Worst case scenario, this is an artifact not even a creature that costs four. Pro worst case scenario, it would be cost less. We'll see. All right, you get that many upkeep steps at this phase. Spicy. Okay. So again, as I guess as upset that this last one made me, this one makes me very excited. Getting extra upkeeps, we don't really see too much. What's that one that's like a mist card, right? Um, it's an enchant, or you can like enchant yourself and get an extra upkeep. There's also that Sphinx of the Second Sun. Is that what it is? Second something. Uh, and yeah, you be able, you get like an extra upkeep as well. Getting extra upkeep is really cool because obviously you can get more and more and more upkeep triggers, which is fantastic. Absolutely lovely. So yeah, being able to get more and more of those are some really cool things. I hope we have that. You get that many additional. Hmm, interesting. I mean, I hope we kind of can build like a commander deck around this, like a commander deck that is just focused on upkeep steps and getting more and more and more of them and utilizing effects that care about the upkeep. That'd be really cool if this is on a legendary creature. I would really hope that happens. Also, apparently, Oxen you control have double strike. Yeah, please give me an Oxen commander. Please. I mean, I don't know. Correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong on this, but I can't imagine there's too many Ox in the game. Oxen in the game. I mean, I know there's like some, and most are like pretty vanilla creatures ish. If not, like they have like Vigilance or whatever. But yeah, basically, very basic creatures are Oxen. I'm trying to think of other ones that like aren't. I don't know. We got plenty of Minotaurs out there, but now we're getting Oxen, so that's great. Uh, yeah, giving Oxen double strike, that's pretty spicy. I would assume that if this is on a commander, it's got some way to actually make Oxen for you. So, pretty sweet. Here's some creature types, uh, type lines from the set. Armadillos, we're getting Armadillos. Uh, shark Rogue, awesome. That's pretty sweet. Anyone? Street Sharks? No? No? Okay. Anyways, that's what that reminds me of. Uh, Plant Bard, cool. Uh, in, in actually, here, let me just say this real quick. I don't think this is a spoiler, because I think they've actually revealed this, but they're like cactus creatures essentially like humanoid cactuses so i'm assuming this is what that is i don't think that they put like cactus they put like plant bard maybe cactus we'll, we'll scroll down further maybe cactus is a creature type but like i'm assuming this is a bard that is a cactus humanoid and that's pretty spicy a uh, creature coyote cool so i guess we with coyote so again like here, here's the thing okay again and i've complained about this before because obviously i i have uh you know a pig logo in the pig channel and um wizards we had we used to have pigs actually it was like zodiac pig we had pigs but now they're all boars because no we couldn't have a pig that designation can't apply but we have like wolves dogs coy coyotes now like and all these different things like you have like all these separate like little things also like sharks and fish yeah come on all right um yeah it's just you have all those designations but you can't give me pig when we used to have it Come on, wizards. What in the world? Uh, Homrid Mercenary. We're getting Homrids back. That's sweet. That's where they've been hiding all this time. Apparently, an outlaw's at Thunder Junction. A Rhino Brawler. Interesting. Ox Angel. Uh, spoiler alert. Make sure you check out my episode on the leaks. Uh, we got to see that one. Did it? I, uh, okay, here's the name. Holy Cow. Isn't that amazing? Its name is Holy Cow. I mean, like, there's going to be a commander deck just built around that just so they can play Holy Cow and be like, Holy Cow! 
and then attack their opponent with holy cow and then take out their opponents with holy cow and then be really obnoxious about it it's gonna be really fun a creature porcupine mount that's hilarious because porcupines obviously have a bunch of uh what do you call them like not spines but you know like you wouldn't want to sit on a porcupine let's just say that but uh apparently this is one actually i think we saw that one too check the leaks uh ledger creature core advisor the core here too everything's here apparently on thunder junction so that's interesting a ledger creature giant scout that's ironic i think i guess it's not like a sneaky scout it's not like a mercenary or rogue kind of thing it's like they can just be like looking at the land and be like let me go find more land like Lewis and Clark kind of stuff but yeah giant scouts like trying I just picture like a giant like trying to like hide behind something it's kind of funny all right finally here are some names from the set claim jumper interesting form a posse that's fun gold rush um treasures wizards please limit the number of treasure cards in this set and all sets moving forward Maybe just don't have them anymore. Thank you. Uh, Great Train Heist. High noon. Quick draw. I wonder if that card's going to draw. <laughs> and it's an instant speed. Hopefully. Uh, Reach for the Sky. Resilient. Roadrunner. Shoot the Sheriff. And this town ain't big enough. Interesting. That's probably a wrath, I would assume. But yeah. Tune into our official YouTube and Twitch channels on 326. The Oko and the gang in action with new card reveals. In preparation, catch up on Owl's Thunder Junction story to bring yourself into the world. Yeah, so uh, about a week, uh, we are going to be getting the actual previews set up and started. I believe it's going to be on the 26th, I think at um, 11 o'clock my time. I think it's 9 o'clock Pacific time, which is what they go based off of. And uh, that's when things are going to start. So make sure, you're, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for, well, exciting quick takes and spoilers around then. Also, stay tuned to the channel in between then, because again, like I've said, we've had like three different like leaks essentially that have come out since things started and again i i'm not going to guarantee you that we're going to get some links between now and then but i wouldn't be surprised let's just say that because of again just the amount of leaks we've got recently yeah the, the ship's leaking a little bit so yeah again let me know your thoughts are on all these things in the description below description in the comments below and of course as always thanks again and have a good one this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you if you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.